Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast, a place where we focus on the business side of art to help you attract more customers, increase profits, and ultimately live a life of creativity and financial freedom. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and this week's episode is a coaching call with Artist Academy member Brian Fritz. Brian is an artist in the beginning of his art journey, and we all know how mentally taxing that time can be. Anybody who's been there, You know, you remember the frustration of those beginning months and years of starting any business. It's exciting, it's hopeful, it's frustrating, but that time specifically is the time to lean on a mentor, which is why I do these calls. So not when you've already, you know, someone established yourself and you have something to brag about to your mentor to show them and impress them. We don't care. <laughs> we don't, I don't care how good of a painter you are or are not. You know, we care about helping you through the toughest times. And for Brian, it's right now. You know, he's interested in gaining more customers and supporting his lifestyle with his art income through canvases, prints, and murals. We chat about how to talk to customers, pitch ideas, and promote his art. So things that I think every beginner artist wants to hear. So if you'd like to sign up for a one-on-one with me, you can do so within the Artist Academy. I offer these to members only for a small fee and at any time. You know, sometimes it helps to have someone experienced look at your business from the outside and tell you exactly what the next steps are for you specifically in the exact moments you're in to take. You know, a mentor can see your future, the future of your business so much more clearly than you can you know, because we've already been there and, or at least in somewhere, some form of where you are. And we've been through it and we've jumped over the hurdles and we've gotten to the other side. And it's really helpful to have somebody that can just see your future a little bit more clearly and just tell you, hey, go in this direction or maybe pivot this, what you're doing here or something. So, I highly encourage everyone to seek out a mentor, whether it's me or someone who does the thing that you specifically want to do. It can make all the difference and it can get you where you want to be so much faster by just having a quick conversation. I think we talked here about 30 minutes or so and we edited it down to the main (laughs) questions. But let me know what you think about this week's sneak peek of a coaching call with Brian Fritz kind of questions do you have for me today? How can I help you? I have so many questions. Great. I'm, I love when people come prepared. <laughs> I am trying to get into murals. I did my first one. It was a blast. I am trying to find more places to do more of them. I've reached out to a couple places so far, kind of just crickets. Well, my first question, I guess, that I wrote down is how do I make a, a mural into a photo op? Okay. So just in general, you can have like a really obvious photo op where there's a spot that's blank that you need the viewer to insert themselves in, or you could make just a a pretty mural that serves as a backdrop, like an Instagrammable backdrop. What kind are you wanting to make? I'm thinking probably more backdrop. Okay. Then it's really just up to the viewer, if they want to do like have that as a backdrop or not, what kind of backdrop are you wanting to make? The thing is, I've been working on acrylic on canvas stuff, you know, forever. And I've been kind of going into this. It's like nature art, and then some abstract and then some affirmations. Okay. I think that would look really cool on a wall, but I could be wrong. Yeah, especially the affirmation part. I'm finding people really resonate with it. Yeah. Yeah, like so something simple, like we were going around the streets of Austin, Texas one time, and I noticed uh, the most popular one there is just one that has a wall that's spray painted, I love you. That's it. And then that's that's the most popular one. So it, I don't know that there's a right or wrong answer here of what's the thing that people are going to resonate the most with, but I tend to go for the most uplifting thing. Yeah. Maybe something short is pretty good. And then girls are the ones who are going to take the majority of the photos with it. I'd say like 90% or more. So thinking about that, however, not all girls like flowers and pink, although a lot of us do. I specialize in birds. So that usually checks the box for that. Yeah. Okay, great. It also has, you know, guys like birds too. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Okay. So I am... In, in that vein, um, birds, I am trying to do more 
charity events and live painting because I did have one good time. I have pulled that off once and it was really cool. I did a live painting for a trails organization out of Ann Arbor and it was a great success. I did this little 16 by 20 painting of a bridge on their trail. And it turns out the guy who um, auctioned, you know, bought it at the silent auction that they were doing, he actually designed the bridge. So okay, I mean, great. That was, that was pretty cool. But like, and then somebody else bought another painting that I had up and was displaying. And so I feel like anytime that I can be the only artist in the room, I'm doing pretty good comparatively. Now I've gotten into a bunch of art fairs as well. And those aren't going, I, th- I know that's a slower pace, like, like that's a longer game. So I'm not as quite as interested in it. I don't know if I want to do quite as many of them as I have planned this year. I have like 15 of them this year total. Oh, wow. Okay. So you got one and then word spread that you would do things like this and now you're booked. Art fairs. Oh. Art fairs, like the, the ones you have to apply for and all that stuff. I got into all of those. Those are those situations where there's a bunch of artists around and I don't do quite as well. I want to do more of, I want to get my name out there and around for live painting events and stuff like that, because that's just, that's more fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all you have to do is just find a local charity. Usually almost every charity locally, it does an annual event and they would love to have an artist. I work with Habitat for Humanity is a good one. And there's likely one near you. We do Mm -hmm. Big Brothers, Big Sisters. There's likely one near you as well for that one. Um, It's really just fine general charities that I've been looking at. Okay. Those are bigger. Yep. And then there's any kind of grief center. We have a grief center here locally. And that was the biggest one that I had ever done with the most big name people there. I think my painting went for like 10 grand there. I was like, oh wow. Which is by far the most that one has gone for. Yeah. You just never know what kind of backing each charity has, but you could try try a bunch out. And it just feels good too to to do something like that. So am I just like kind of emailing them saying, hey, I do this. Here's an example. Are you interested? Yeah, I would definitely give the, like the photos that you have of you at the event that you've already done. So it's great that you've already done one. And you could just say, it's like in the email headline, say something like Big Brothers, Big Sisters, annual charity night mural or something like that. Or, mm-hmm. you know, painting. And then... You could just make it pretty general, but hi, I'm Brian. I'm a local artist. I wanted to offer my services to do live painting at your annual charity event. I attached some photos of my work and past events. Let me know if you're interested and I can, we can discuss details. So something very, very short and sweet and to the point. And then you can go about this in a couple different ways. You can... Say something like, these are my prices, as in like they can just buy a print from you. This is how how I do it Mm -hmm. is they can just buy a print and that way I'm there not painting a brand new thing. I just, you know, I just hand embellish the print and that way it's already done. And it's, it's just, I'm just there putting the fine finishing touches on it. People can look at something pretty and then they auction it off or do with it whatever they want to. Sometimes people just donate it to somebody, you know, their highest bidder or or their highest donor or whatever. But a lot of the times people auction it off in the end. So you also bring your paintings with you to, so you you mentioned you sold another one there. Yeah. They let me set up a couple of little grid walls with some, some paintings and stuff on them. And yeah, one of them, somebody who's really interested in one of them. Yeah. The way we did it was we split the proceeds of the painting 70, 30, my favorite. Because they're really nice about oh, nice. it, and you know, anything that I sold there, I gave them ten percent of it. Great, yeah, yeah. And it was, yeah, you know, it was nice to give them, you know, what hundred eighty bucks or so. That was my little contribution yeah. to the trail. That was pretty nice. So yeah, I want to do do more of that. I just always feel like I'm just like inserting myself into their little events, and I'm not always clear if there's if like the auction it off thing is you know always what they're doing exactly. If it's not like a silent auction, sort of a deal. So I'm like offering to, to sell them the painting effectively and then paint it there for entertainment purposes. Uh, yeah, you could do pure entertainment for purposes and then you could ask them what they want to do. You could really, a lot of times, if you just tell people what you kind of want them to do or what you've done in the past, they'll 
pretty much do that. Because sometimes doing live art at an event, sometimes people, maybe even the smaller events, they've never done that before. And they're like, what do we do here? What are we supposed to do? And so you could just suggest whatever. Yeah. Anybody who has, has said yes and like kind of proceeded with that that conversation after I've you know emailed them has kind of just wanted to split the proceeds of whatever we get for it. Yeah, that's good. So as to like minimize risk, which I totally understand. Yeah. Okay. I will try and pitch to some other ones that aren't necessarily doing that. Like an actual, here's a painting or here's a print. Yeah. And I'd say 70, 30, they were really generous yeah. there. Like, you know, most, most of the time people do like 50, 50. Yeah, for sure. I do two kinds of art. I do acrylic paintings, basically. This is one that's in progress. And I do lino cut prints. They're similar in nature, but I am wondering if doing both of those and putting them both, you know, together is confusing people. And I've had to explain it a bunch of times at art fairs, if I should, you know, commit to just the painting or if lino cut is like not harming the painting, kind of what I mean. So you're doing an original painting and then you're doing a print? No, these are lino cut prints. They are like you carve the block. Yeah, no, I, I think that's completely fine. Okay, because I wonder sometimes if I'm stepping on my own toes. Oh, no, no. And I think a lot of times you just have to answer a lot of questions. Even I was confused a little bit and it was, and that's totally fine because it sparks a conversation and that's good. You know, I have to explain even still the difference between an original and just a print of my work. Yeah. I think the general public has no idea what that relief print is. And so just explaining to them, it, it, I think it's just kind of cool to just educate someone like yeah. that and just get, get a conversation going. But no, I think you could have all different kinds of stuff and start all different kinds of good as long as you're like okay with just explaining it over and over yeah i've figured out some ways to explain it i've even had like a pull your own print section at uh at my art fair booths so i have a really big opportunity coming up and again this is art fairs and it's like not exactly like my thing but i've kind of fallen into it this year so I'm just trying to you know make the the best of it it's becoming more my thing i've figured out some stuff but I have an opportunity to be in the Emerging Artist Tent at the Ann Arbor Art Fair. How do I make the best of that? So I don't have a lot of experience with art fairs, but I know several artists who do it and I'm from very familiar with it. I just, I have never done it. So my advice is going to be a little bit different, but I think the best thing you could possibly do is get contact information from everybody yes. that's coming by and then have something, have like a low, medium and high price tier as well to fit at every budget. I think the, those two things, just getting their email or something to where you can follow up. And I think also a really good idea that I've seen somebody do before is you, since you're wanting to do more murals, yeah, mm -hmm. you could do something to where you're giving away a free mural and you could have examples of like the mural that you've done. And then just really quick, you could just have somebody fill out their name and email and then say, I, I'm giving away a free mural. And then everybody who doesn't win that free mural you contact and say, hey, thanks so much for entering. This is Brian from the art show. You didn't win, but I did want to extend a 50% discount for the mural of your choice or something significant. Yeah. And let me know, like, like, I have some ideas that I think you might like. Let me know if you're interested in this. And then we can, you know, start the customization process for your custom mural. And so just doing something like that. And also, if you wanted to add you know, what the mural, like name, email, and then what kind of mural are you wanting at the bottom? That way, whenever you're like picking the winner, <laughs> you can pick something that you want to do or something that you really want to add yeah. to your portfolio. Yeah. And I think that's completely fair because you are doing this for free. And then I would also limit it in the fine print to whatever square feet, whatever detail you want, something that you could knock out in a day. Right. And then right. if they wanted to add on, this is a really good upsell opportunity. You know, when they tell you that and be like, oh yeah, I can do this and I can do this. And then if you want more, we could do this. But you know, I'm happy to come in and do this for free, you know, since you won the drawing. Okay. Right. That's the foot in the door. I've gotten like 75% of the way there, but you've explained the other part. Okay, that's good. Okay, good. 
Yeah, I think just doing those uh, like mural giveaways, especially in the beginning when you're adding to your portfolio is a really good way to just get people talking. I know an artist recently who she just did one a giveaway for schools. So she had all the schools enter and then she drew one and then you're getting all the contacts of all the schools, right? right? Yes. So that would be a good one to maybe do for the summer. If you wanted to get into school murals for the schools for the summer right now, they are setting their budget for mm-hmm. the year. And they're just about to start that. And well, I mean, there's a lot of that are, they have to end it. So they have to get their budget done by like the end of June. So they need it right now. So right now would be a really good time to even approach schools who might have that leftover money. And then they could also budget it in for next year. Okay. So you were talking about low, medium and high prices. Are we talking like low is like five to 20? Yeah. Okay. Mediums, something like under a hundred. Yeah. And then everything over that because I don't actually have anything that's like over like six or 1200. Oh yeah. And I know you're good. Really. I think customization is the main thing that I've found to get me over that $1,000 mark. It's tough for me to sell a painting that I've done on my own completely for over a grand. That could be a, a lot of different factors, but customization just while you're there sparking a conversation with a customer or potential customer. Uh, they're like, oh, I like this. What do you like about it? If this was hanging in your home, how would you change it? Are these the colors that match your living room? Are you these like, is this something that you would, you could see in one of your rooms or like, you know, be like, and just the words custom and one of a kind, those kind of keywords are things that I think can allow you to charge more and also and spark some ideas and just just asking people what they would want is pretty much how I got my jump start is how I you know built my mural business very quickly is just asking people what they want okay how do you go about promoting and creating hype for like a print like an art print how are you planning on promoting or creating hype I have an email list I will send things to them. I'll send them like they'll they'll show up at shows, which is really really cool. But I'll send them like here's a thing that I've I've done at my shop, and like it's kind of like it's crickets. So I feel like I'm probably doing something kind of wrong, or you know maybe it's just not enough people. <laughs> maybe both. So really, the more people, the better in general. But so. Your email list, typically, I think the best route for an email list is once a month, just have a general, this is what's happening. And then maybe once a month, have something special happening. Either you're going to do a drawing for a free mural, or you're doing 20% off these prints, or you're doing some kind of something to where it entices people to buy now, not just saying, look what I made. You know, it's just like a, what, how can you buy now? And this worked really well well for me recently because I just did an art auction with three of my paintings. Mm -hmm. And instead of just posting and making a cute reel and getting attention and, you know, sending something to my email list and just saying, look what I just created. I basically said, who wants to buy this and what do you want to buy it for? (laughs) And I did an auction where, you know, bid on, I did three, it was pink, purple and blue. And I said, you know, what is your bid on each of these? And I'll let you know if you've been outbid. And I sold them for like 450 each, which is pretty good because I can do about two in, in one day. And my hope was to go over 400. But I just I did it on Instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook. And Instagram had some bidders. And LinkedIn had some bidders, but Facebook was crickets. So just I have a bigger following on Instagram than anything, yeah. but I got had just as many buyers from LinkedIn as I did from Instagram and none from Facebook, which is odd. So saying something like like that, you could try an art auction if you want to, if you have like a set of prints that you've had around for a while that you don't mind if they go for a low amount, you know, I do my art auctions to last a week. That way I can promote it for the whole week. There's a deadline. I have people bidding against each other. I let people know as soon as they've been outbid. I did it on to where people just commented on my photos and videos on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook this last time. But I've also in the past set it up on my Shopify with just a plugin to where people could bid there and it automatically emails them whenever they've been outbid, which is really nice. So I just, you know, I've tried a couple different ways, but I found that, that an art auction is... 
I think by far the best way to sell something. I think the most I've sold something for through the auction is like five, six hundred dollars, but I've sold a lot of fifty, one hundred dollars, one fifty, two hundred items, and a lot of times they're just items that have been hanging around my studio that I really want to get rid of. So, and it's just, it's just saying, and I think part of that is like saying, "This is for sale. How much do you want to pay?" You know, and just letting them kind of decide like what that price is and how far they'll go up. Because I, I had people bidding on it, bidding on one for there would be like four hundred, and then four ten, and then four twenty, and then four fifty, and you know, and then one guy decided that four fifty fifty was his highest. So I messaged him and I said, "Okay, I will paint one for four fifty for you, and then the other bidder can have this one." And so I have five other paintings of the same paintings to do right. on my to do list that I'm supposed to do this week, <laughs> and. Yeah, so it, that that was also a great tactic that I used. It was just, you know, if there was two people bidding each other and it went up like as high as they wanted to go, I was like, okay, I'll do one for you and one for you. And they're like, okay, great. And I also, the one who didn't win or didn't want to go up higher, I'd be like, how do you want to customize this? Is there, is there something that you wanted, you want to add? Do you want more clouds? Do you want this to be purple? Do you want it to be more violet? Do you want this? And just having that customization process, even in that, it's sold. So okay. I highly recommend art auctions okay yeah you're combining every all these these tactics that i've, I've heard of with the customization and that that yeah. seems to get it over the finish line okay yeah so sometimes when you need it to i mean i painted three and i was like okay selling them as is you know and then like I would just start conversations with people who were bidding, maybe even the people who had been outbid. I would message them and say something like, hey, you've been outbid. I know that 300 is the highest you can go. I do have a the lowest I, mean, I can go on these is 400. I can create something custom for you if you're willing to go 400. You know, I could we could do maybe blue and purple. Do, do you like the blue? And just starting, starting like that. Anybody who's bidding on it, that's not just bidding like, $10 or whatever, I think is worth having a, just a conversation with. Okay. And then you're just putting that up on your, you know, various social medias as, as posts and throwing it to your email list as well. Yep. And I really like like having the auction on my website. I think that's a bit more professional. Yeah. Uh, so the next time, next time I'm going to do that probably, but yeah, I aimed to post every day and I probably posted about every other day, but I did a video and then I do a photo and then I do a collage and then I do a video or reel and just kind of trying different things to see who, how I can get it to reach different people. I find that the best things that work best for me on Instagram are reels still. And then the things that work best for me on Facebook are photos. And then LinkedIn is a mix between photos and videos. It just kind of depends. Okay. What do you do when you feel like you got all the wheels spinning, but you don't have any traction yet? I jumped into our kind of full-time feet first, whatever, April, March, April or so. And everything I can tell, it's it's been going well, but it doesn't seem to like, it's self-sustaining and that's about it. How long is it okay for an art business to be just self-sustaining and just floating before? So this kind of fluctuates, but I think... In the beginning, your first year in business, no matter what year it is, like no matter what business you're in almost, the first year in business, you probably don't even expect to make a profit your first year. And then the second year, maybe that's unless some other people have gotten lucky. Like, you know, if you you have somebody who's like a mentor that's taking you under your wing, it's handing you stuff, then you're going to make a profit, right? Yeah. And I wish I'd done that. Yeah. But people who don't have that, maybe break even your first year if lucky, maybe. Right. So like probably living off savings. And then the second year, 20,000 is probably a good estimate. And that's, and then the third year, and this is for people who are mostly doing murals because that's the, mostly yeah. the people who I train. Yeah. And that's where I want to go because I realize that that's a much more profitable way to do things. Like yeah. I don't, I don't mind using a bigger brush. That's fine. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. And then I'd say the second year, maybe making 40,000. And then the third year, 70. And then fourth year, 100. I think that's probably, that's what I have seen is a good trajectory. But yeah, I wouldn't, don't feel bad at all. And in, in your first year, you're just like barely getting your head above water. I recommend like people get either just get like a, a part-time job. I think that can help just so it's like less pressure off of you. It's like just enough to just get by. But although 
if you want to make some quick cash doing window painting, I think is the quickest way. Do you know, have you tried that? Do you know about that? I haven't done it yet, but I have heard you talking about okay. it a lot. And I have actually seen some around town. Okay, great. And I think I could probably do better. So yeah. Yeah. Fourth of July is coming up. And the Fourth of July was one of my first window paintings that I did from four. It was at Orthodontics office. So you never know who's going to really people who have customers coming in like an orthodontics office or maybe like a pediatrician's office or somebody who has customers that would enjoy it. I think those are the main ones. Yeah. People who just have people coming in the door quite a bit. Maybe if it's just like an office that doesn't have customers visit, then probably not. But if, if it's a clothing store, or I pitched it to a, a barber shop one time, although they gave me the excuse of which it, it was a good excuse that their their window is primarily, you know, how they get most of their business because and they, they, they didn't want to cover it up. And so I was like, well, we could just make a frame, yeah. a really cool frame around it, get people's eye to draw into the window. And then you are still the center of the attention. And they still didn't go for it. But <laughs> they, I think some people will. <laughs> so even just having like a firework frame yeah. around there for 4th of July, something. Window painting is a good one. You're going to wear yourself out passing around out flyers, but it's just, it's a really good way to set yourself up for next year. It's usually, or even the fall and Christmas, because a lot of times windows, they will ask you to come back mm-hmm. and paint the next season. And then especially in Christmas, if you start pass around those window flyers now, you're going to be booked for Christmas. Okay. Cool. And you're in Michigan, so that might be kind of cold. But if you wanted to do those windows like right as soon as Halloween is over and just stack them in for Christmas and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. I don't mind the cold too darn much. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I'm realizing with our conversation here that I've been actually aiming a little too specific. What do you mean? I've been thinking about working with nature organizations and trail orgs and stuff like that. And that's good. But I can aim bigger, more specific with the charities that I work with. And I can probably be a little bit bigger, more general, sorry, with the charities that I'm working with. And I can probably be more general with the the murals as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you're definitely not wrong to be specific. Um, You'll probably get more yeses even whenever you are more specific like that. But yeah, put it out to everybody. I paint for a variety of people. And I don't know that like our local zoo is one. Uh, If you get into the zoo, that would be a good one. The zoo, you have been? I've been trying. I contacted one of the local zoos last week. So I will try and follow up with that later. Yeah, yeah. The wings that I painted at our our local zoo, the the photo ops Mm -hmm. are one of the main ways that I get recognized around town. People are like, oh, you painted at the zoo. Like that's just, it's a huge thing. And I did the zoo paintings for little to nothing, but they have gained so much for me. They do have some kind of budget in there. So just kind of like, you know, be like, okay, well we could do, you know, one painting every six months or something. And that way they could pay you. But I mean, I charged very little. For the, I want to say like a few hundred dollars and they, they paid for the supplies, but then I charged like a few hundred dollars. And then now I just kind of paint for them every once in a while for free. Cause I'm like, okay, whatever, because I do get so much business from it. And they also have an annual event every year that I volunteer at. And it's a good one. It's a good one to be at. Okay. So I will, I will offer that as, as well when I finally get a hold of them or some other zoo that's working on that. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Really? I mean, a good idea is to find as to find out what people want to be in front of is maybe if you want to create a couple mock-ups mm. and you could do something online, but maybe post on your social medias, three different mock-ups and then ask people, which one would you more likely to stand in front of to take a photo? And it gets people talking and gets people's opinions going. And you don't necessarily have to listen to them specifically, but I think it can help just to get word going and maybe try to get some spots around town that might be available as well. Yeah. Yeah. Customer feedback, customization, even with the photo ops and whatnot. Right. That's the other thing that I'm learning is if you customize it, they're more likely to go for this. Yeah. And I think there's definitely two different routes to be an artist. Like, you know, there's the artist that does exactly what they want to do and they you know, sell paintings that way. And that's totally possible. I think it's just, it's gonna, 
it takes a lot longer to get started yeah. with that. And so it just takes a lot more patience. And so you could totally do that route if you wanted to, just having to have like some kind of other income coming in, or maybe like if you want to do, you know, murals for other people on the side, then do also what you want. Like you could totally do that as well. I don't want to discourage you to, as to you know, just do what everybody else wants you to do. No, totally. But it is a way if you don't mind being an artist for hire and you're like me and you're more here to make money mm -hmm. so I can go live my life and do other things, that's the way that to do that, I've found. Okay. Because now I'm like gardening and I'm doing other stuff and I'm like, I don't necessarily want to just like create my own art all the time. It's not really, I want to just do other things. But yeah, whatever you want to do is totally possible. It's, it just Sometimes it just takes longer. Okay, good. Good to know. That's just a balance there. I can work with that. So I've gotten some prints made of my paintings real quick. An eight by 10, is 30 reasonable for that or? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have like a 12 by 16 that I'm thinking like 50 feels maybe a little bit low. And then I have this idea that I'm going to, I'm trying to pull off. I got this guy. Woo, wrong Very way. cool. Oh, oh, I love shit. that. Wrong wow. Way. Yeah. It's a peacock. I call it spectacle. I love gold in my on canvas paintings yes. and exploring all of those sorts of things. But I'm thinking it's an 18 by 24. I'm thinking ordering 16 by 20 prints and then putting gold leaf on them. And I'm thinking sell those for like 150. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Yeah, I'm trying to like pre-sell them, but I'm kind of getting crickets. So I'm realizing I probably have to buy a couple of them myself and then do it and then show people and they'll be more likely. Maybe. It seems sometimes like you yeah. have to show people exactly what it is when you're doing something like this. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And just show them the goals. Like, I, yeah. th I think that that's even a good video of just like putting the light on it. That's its own promotion cycle. Okay. Yeah. Is there any way? I, I'm not super familiar with the printing relief thing, but is there any way for people to like you to have like a relief print and then somebody to come and like make and like roll the ink on it and do them the themselves. That's what I've been doing actually for the last uh, oh. couple of art fairs. Okay, good. And yeah. It's been okay. It's been okay. Kids love it. And the idea so far is that I'm teaching the kids how to print and kind of explaining the process as the parents are kind of like looking around the booth and it's been moderately successful. It's been okay. I feel real weird trying to charge for the prints, so I don't because they come out really bad. <laughs> but like that's also part of the the charm of it. They can also start to realize like, oh, lino cuts are actually kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think even just charging like a really small fee, like five bucks or something, to do okay. some or like a dollar. I don't know. Okay. Something because you are using your supplies. Yeah, probably free. Probably undervalues it a little too much maybe yeah i think that's what i got i have some local companies to try and introduce myself to i was in the artist academy stuff the mural masters yesterday yeah. reviewing the the pitching process and and did send an email it felt a little in, impersonal but i'm hoping for the best sometimes i think the brevity is probably good for me i tend to ramble a little bit so how many times do you follow up on something like this before you're like, okay, well, they're just not like three or four? So what do you mean it sounded a little... Did, did you customize it? In this particular one, there's a, a local yoga studio and I was looking through their website and they do wall yoga. And I'm like, well, how cool would it be for that wall to have like a really cool, chill, calm, sort of like a mural thing going on there, right? Like yeah. even real low res, just like waves or like I could do a little like sunset or a beach scene or something like that. Something cool, calming, forest, whatever. A bunch of different ways you can go about it, right? And I said, hey, my name is Brian. I'm a local muralist. I have some ideas about your, your yoga wall. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Perfect. Sometimes I just need the, someone to tell me, yeah, that's all you need. You're good. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it's good. And then I would follow up. Usually I follow up about a week later. Okay. And if they don't respond, I 
I follow up about two weeks later. And then I follow up like a month later after that. Okay. So I just double the time that I follow up with. And then you could even, then it would be a good idea if that studio, yoga studio has windows, mm -hmm. you could go and with your window flyer, say, hey, I'm Ryan. I emailed you guys about this, blah, blah, blah. Like I also do windows. Do you, are you interested in this? Like, are you guys interested in the, in the thing I emailed you about? Like kind of like double them. Right, got it. Hey, I happen to be in the neighborhood. I emailed you guys. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for your time yeah. and your patience. Sure thing. No, you're totally good. I think it's just remember it's so tough in the beginning and it sucks, but it's worth it. It's just, you're doing the right things. You're watching the videos and you're putting it into action, which is way more than a lot of people do. A lot of people join the academy and they don't do anything. And then they're like, then they leave because they get, and they're like, this isn't working. And then they send one email and I'm like, oh, like, but you're, you're doing that. You book the call and you're sending the emails and you're going to go pass around the flyers. I can tell that you're going to make it work. You care. You care and you're doing the things and it, it will. So I just keep doing the things. And if you have any questions, just post those in the Academy and we will be happy to help you. There's so many people in there that have been exactly where you have been, you know, are right now and they know the struggles and even just, you know, just posting something in there of like with the email that you're sending and then having five people chime in and say, Hey, you know, I sent this to a yoga studio and it worked. Like you never know who we have in there that not because not just me, you know, I have my own ways of doing things that, that work for me, but there's so many people in there that have different ways that have worked for them and could work for you too. And we're always ready to help try to encourage you because we need more artists out there to be doing what you're, you know, you're pitching to do. And so there's room for you in your town as well. And yeah, I'm interested to see where you're going to be in a year. I think you'll be, you'll have several more jobs under your belts and pitching will be easier and it only gets easier from here. This is the hardest part you're going to be at. That helps. That helps okay, good. Because yeah. it is hard. Yeah. <laughs> this part yeah, kind of sucks. Just, <laughs> I just remember even going and hanging out with my friends was hard when I was in that you know, starter phase because it's just like it affects your whole life. Yeah. Like it affects your confidence. It affects everything. It just affects how much you can spend at dinner with your friends. Like it's like yeah. it affects everything. And it's just I'm in such a good place now of just not having to worry about it anymore. And that's why I created stuff like this. And I'm willing to help you in whatever you need. So you can do it. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Artist Academy podcast. If you like this art and business talk in audio form, then I want to invite you to get my book. It's called Mural Money, How to Grow Your Art Business from Zero to Six Figures. So starting from the very bottom, like you don't even have a website yet. You have nothing. You're not sure where to go and you want to make money with a paintbrush. You want to have your creativity pay the bills. I have taken so much of the advice that I've gotten from artists from this podcast. I've been doing one episode for over five years now. So many interviews, so many good bits of advice. So I've taken the best of the best of that advice and put it in my book, along with so many stories and lessons learned that I've had in my own mural career of just how I would go back and save a whole lot of time if I just knew these steps. It's a 15 hour audio book. And so if you like this podcast, if you're listening to interview after interview, I know that you're going to like the book. So go to muralmoney.com. It's for anybody who wants to grow their art business with a paintbrush. Muralmoney.com. And I will see you next week for another episode of the Artist Academy podcast. <laughs>